This segment of the news is brought to you by Journey to Recovery. Take the first step. Call 775-382-1072. News is also brought to you by Smitty's Cards and Coins. Would you like to know what your collectibles are worth? Come by 2281 Postal Road, Unit 4, across from the post office. A protest ended tragically in Charlottesville, Virginia, over the weekend when a car plowed into a crowd of protesters during a rally, killing one person and injuring dozens of others. White nationalists gathered on Saturday for a Unite the Right march and were met by counter protesters. Officials said that taunting led to shoving, which escalated into brawling. 32 year old paralegal Heather Hare was killed as a result of being struck by the vehicle that rammed into the crowd, which saw bodies flying. The car was driven by a 20-year-old man from Ohio who is facing multiple charges, including second-degree murder. Hayer's friends say she was a passionate advocate for the disenfranchised and was often moved to tears by the world's injustices. Two state troopers also died on Saturday. Lieutenant H.J. Collins and Trooper Burke M.M. Bates were in a helicopter circling Charlottesville monitoring the demonstrations when the helicopter fell and burst into flames. The reason for the crash is unknown at this time. The governor of Virginia has declared a state of emergency. A prompt man was taken into custody following a conflict with neighbor kids. The Nye County Sheriff's Office has placed Scott Patton under arrest for assault with a deadly weapon, child endangerment, possession of a firearm by an intoxicated person, and aiming a firearm at a human being. On August 2nd, deputies were dispatched in reference to a call of a man aiming a gun at people. Upon arrival, deputies met with Scott Patton. Patton allegedly told police that kids were riding up and down the street in front of his home on motorcycles. Patton stated they were doing wheelies and flipping him off. The press release also states Patton told police he went into his home and retrieved his shotgun to show the kids. Patton allegedly placed the shotgun on the bumper of his vehicle and then placed it in the back of his truck because he didn't want law enforcement to see it. Patton also told police that he normally keeps the shotgun breech area clear and unloaded. Upon inspecting the weapon, it was discovered that there was a shell in the breech and four shells in the magazine. While police were speaking with Patton, they noticed signs of possible intoxication. Police administered a breathalyzer test, which Patton failed. Police also interviewed the victims, who told deputies that Patton had pointed the firearm at them. They stated they then returned home to get their parents, who returned to Patton's residence, to confront him, at which time Patton allegedly pointed the weapon at them as well. Scott Patton was arrested and transported to the Nye County Detention Center. This is Caitlin Boyer reporting for News 46. And Angela Miles tells us about the investigation into Wells Fargo. Tapping our news, defense stocks are still on the rise and it's mostly due to North Korean tensions. Raytheon, which makes the Patriot anti-missile system, is up 8%. For the month of August, new questions are being raised about Wells Fargo's practices with mom and pop shops. In one report, Wells is accused of overcharging small businesses for processing credit card transactions. A lawsuit filed in U.S. District Court alleges that some business owners who tried to leave Wells Fargo were charged unusually high termination fees. The company did not immediately respond, but has been working to address other scandal-related issues. And JCPenney is losing ground in the stock market. The retailer reported disappointing results for the second quarter. That stock is now trading around $4 per share. It was once an $80 stock about 10 years ago. Thanks, Angela. Longtime volunteer Alice Eichner said goodbye to her friends here in Pahrump Saturday at the Moose Lodge. Alice is suffering from Alzheimer's and is moving to Tennessee to live with her family. We caught up with Alice and her son, Todd. Todd told News 46 that he plans on returning and still operating the welcome wagon for the annual Baker to Vegas relay race. The wagon represents Pahrump by greeting law enforcement runners from all over the world who pass through our town. Alice has been proudly representing Pahrump for many years in this capacity as well as many others. We're celebrating my mother's going away, leaving Pahrump. It was a hard decision to make. You reported back on the first that uh, the emotions go from one end of the scale to the other constantly. 
the decision was made to bring her to a facility that can help us take care of her. Um, the outpour and support that we have received since then, I know why she came to Pahrump. Your mom's been so involved in so many things here, including Baker to Vegas, the Wild West Extravaganza, Pahrump Valley Chamber of Commerce, uh, football, Monday Night Football, everything. Yep, she had to kind of push her way to Jeffrey, I believe was his name, at the Nuggets to get Monday Night Football started because they didn't think that was going to be a big thing. And she, uh, she gets something in her mind and gets in her, you know, thoughts. It's going to happen. And I think a lot of people saw her volunteer and everything. And we've heard some comments tonight about uh, my older brother. He served the public as a police officer. I served my public as a firefighter. And ironically, she's moving to a state that's known as a volunteer state in Tennessee. Throughout the years, we've heard Alice saying she was going back to Tennessee for a vacation, but that's where she's going to go and uh, live with her family. That's correct. That's, yeah. uh, that's the final destination right now. Um, plans could change, but as of right now, she'll remain in Tennessee with myself. My How did the party go today, Alice? Fantastic. Couldn't have asked for a nicer one. It, it's sad to think that I'm leaving, but I'm looking forward to returning. Thanks so much for doing this. Thanks so much for inviting everybody to this party here at the Moose Lodge. I just have to say thanks to everybody that's ever been around my mom. You do not know what it means to the family or to my mother. Thank you, Deanna, for all the kind things you've done over the years with her and everybody else that's reports and helped her. Thank you everything for what your mom has done for our community because it's uh, amazing um, the involvement that she's had, the impact that she's had here in Perm. And I didn't know until you had questioned me and asked me for to give you a list and the list just kept growing and growing and growing. I'm not a typist by no means and my fingers were wore out yeah. so it was amazing for me to find out truly all the things that my mother had done. Thank you so much. Thank you, Alice, for everything that you've done. Thank you. Looking forward to coming home. We wish Alice and her family the very best. We'll be back in just a moment with more news.